Yeah, I think you and I, speaking about it, we talked about uh, the idea of being a teacher. Um, one is... I think you used the term high school teacher, high which school I thought teacher. was so cool. Yeah, yeah. I actually had some good high school teachers. Uh, but no, absolutely. Like when you're going from being, let's say you're going, um, just using the high school analogy, if you're going from being on the junior varsity team, like you're not great, but you're kind of learning the ropes and you're getting better at playing the sport. Yeah. Right? So when you're junior varsity, your goal is just to become on the varsity team in high school, right? Of course. And so a lot of times the reason you got promoted to director is because you were actually pretty good at what you did. Right? Yeah. If you're dropping the ball all the time, you're always going to be on the junior varsity team or not on a team. So one is congratulations, you were actually somewhat successful. So you're on the varsity team. But if you think about being a director, it's not about being the superstar director and then everybody who works for you is just kind of your vassal, right? Yeah. It's not that, right? So you know, if you really are going to be a really impactful director, a lot of times it means you are kind of like a high school teacher. So you're teaching other people how to become varsity players yeah right so when you think about teachers i mean think back to like not your bad teachers but your good teachers um it's going to be people who are like really patient who made it very clear what it looks like who understood you as a person you know right bring you along because um at the end of the day um teaching is not about how well you say things but about how well people hear and actually take it up right so yeah. no i think high school teacher is not a bad yeah, I love that. Archetype. I had um, I was doing a, a session a few months ago on executive presence, mm. and I was asking the group. I said, "What does mm. executive presence mean in this company?" Right. And um, they wanted to use a basketball analogy, so it kind oh. of goes to that really well. And I said, "So is executive presence like that leader mm. that?" And often executive presence pops up at a director level, VP level. Right. That's, you're you're saying, "Oh my gosh, look at her! Look at him! They've got right. executive presence." Right. Uh, I said, is it, "Is it the person that dunks or the person that passes the ball?" Mm. They're like, "It's the person that passes the ball." makes everyone around them mm, better. Right. It's the person with lots of assists. Like they pass the ball and other people score. It, they're not the ones scoring, to, to your point. So it's a lot of that, that yeah. teaching yeah, yeah. and ed educating, um, which then bleeds in things like delegation, making mm. sure you're delegating. So you're, you're, you're not scoring as much as you're passing, which is delegation. You know? And then you're equipping people to do mm. that work. And that's... Um I love that idea of passing, right? It makes me think of John Stockton, yeah, Utah Jazz, right? He, um, it's uh, he led the what led the league in assists, sent, you know, passing the ball to Carl Malone. Um, delegating, it's interesting, and passing the ball. Um, why do people do you think tend to not pass the ball as much as they could or should? Because I think part of it, I mean, I know of directors who don't pass the ball is because they don't have trust and faith in the people who are receiving the ball. Like they would rather shoot then pass the ball because they feel if they pass the ball, we're not going to score. Yeah. And so there could be a lot I think, of... I think to your point earlier, your yeah. analogy earlier, you were on the JV team right. and you were great at scoring right. and then you get moved up the varsity team. Uh -huh. And well, why'd you get moved up the varsity team? Because you were good. Because yeah. you were great at scoring. Mm, yeah. so, so you think, I just mm. have to do what I was doing more of or harder. So I did not intend for this show to be a show of nothing but analogies, but I'm going to throw <laughs> another one. <laughs> yeah. So here comes another one. So I remember there was an interview, another sports analogy, but mm -hmm. this is an interview with uh, Greg Maddox, famous yep. uh, Hall of Famer, pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, yep. arguably maybe not the best thrower of history, but one of the best pitchers because okay. he could throw any pitch anywhere. Yeah. Super smart guy, like knew how to yeah. get into hitters' heads. Yeah. And he made this comment. He mm. said, the difference between a really good pitcher mm. and a great Hall of Fame pitcher mm. is when a good pitcher gets into trouble, the pitcher throws harder, uh. tries to do the same thing harder. When a, great pitcher get, when a great pitcher gets into trouble, they throw softer, which is so counterintuitive. So what we're talking about here is being counterintuitive. Like you got promoted because you were really great at this thing, and now all of a sudden you need to, not, you need to stop doing that thing mm. and teach other people to do the thing. And I think the other part too is when you're a manager and you have direct reports, those are individual contributors, mm. a lot of them might always want to be individual contributors. They may not desire to have your job. But if you're a director and you have managers under you, mm. they probably desire to have your job, right? Because <laughs> the next step of a manager is to be a director. Like when will this person leave already, right? You're, so you need to grow and groom them yeah. so you can get promoted mm. and one of them can step up and take your job. It's a, it's a different kind of a role, but people often don't see that subtlety in there. It's interesting too, using that thought of, you know, really great pitchers actually are willing to throw softer, right? To, to go with a different competency, yeah. not the one that really brought them there. It makes me also think a little bit around um, 
if you're really good at one thing, the question is, how much marginally are you going to get better at that thing if you really are at the expert level? Isn't it really useful to learn a different thing and mix those things together? Yeah. So kind of using the like a superhero analogy or something like that, if you if uh, if the Hulk or something was really strong on one side of his body, right, the right arm, he just punches with his right arm. Eventually, that's not a really multi multifunctional superhero at all, right? So I think one thing I heard from Naval Ravikant, which um, I strongly recommend. Uh, he's a VC and he gives a lot of like career advice type stuff. One thing he was saying is that it's very possible you can't be the top 1% in the world at something, but it's very possible for you to be the top 5% at three different things that you can combine.